Phoenix from Bavaria. And I'm one of 10,000 of climate justice ambassadors globally fighting for our future. And I would like to share with you the point of view of us children. Because we children and youth, we have one main problem facing our future. In a few years when we are adults, and we will have to live with all the problems not solved today, we will not be able to take the adults into account for not solving these problems. Because they will be dead by then. And if this wasn't the case, most adults globally would probably act very differently. And we children and youth, we see two main crises facing our future. The poverty crisis and the climate crisis. We have a poverty crisis with 30,000 people, mainly children, dying of starvation every single day. With one billion people living with less than one dollar a day, and nearly half of the world's population living with less than two dollars each day. And at the same time, we also have a climate crisis. Because every day we take as much carbon in form of coal, oil, and gas out of the ground as it took one million days for the sun to store it there. And we children, we've understood that the adults know about these crises. Since, um, since decades, since the first Club of Rome report, the limits of growth some 40 years ago, or by the latest, since the um, inter first International um, Sustainability Conference some 20 years ago. But we children and youth, we do not understand why there is so little action to solve these problems, to save our future. And we've often asked ourselves that. And we came up with three possible reasons why there might be so little action. The first reason is the meaning of future. For most adults, future seems to mean 20, 30, or even 40 years. But for many of us children and youth globally, 2100 is still in our lifetime. And therefore, it's an academic question for the adults if the sea level will rise by one, two, um, or three centimeters, or one meter, until 2100. But for many of us children and youth globally, it's a question of survival. And the second possible reason why there is so little action to save our future um, is, is that many adults seem to hide behind the climate skeptics, the ones that say there is no climate crisis. But for all these, we have an answer. If we um, are active today, if we um, listen to the climate scientists today and act and do something, and in 20 years we find out that they were wrong, then we didn't do any mistake. But if we now follow the climate skeptics, the ones that say there is no climate crisis, and do nothing, and in 20 years we find out that they were wrong, then it's going to be too late to save our future. And the third possible reason why there is so little um, done is, um, is the example of the monkeys. In an experiment, if you let a monkey choose if he wants one banana now or six bananas later, the monkey will always choose the one banana now. And it seems that many adults think a little like these monkeys. And in addition to that, for most, for most adults globally, 9-11 seems to be the darkest day in recent history. At that terrible terrorist act, 3,000 people died. But every day, 30,000 people are dying of starvation. And for us children and youth globally, 12-11 is the darkest day in history. At the climate, um, climate conference in Durban in South Africa, because at that climate conference, there was a very simple goal to get a follow-up contract for the, um, for the Kyoto Protocol, which ended in 2012. But instead of deciding to make a new contract at the start of 2013, the governments decided there should only be a new contract in 2020, which means that in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, all countries can exhaust unlimited amounts of CO2. And this also means that the two degrees goal is impossible to reach. That the, the goal that the temperature um, is not allowed to ri uh, rise by more than two degrees. But this goal is incredibly important. And at that conference, the Canadian Environment Minister 
made the, sing the whole situation even worse. First, during the conference, he gave a beautiful speech, but already then, six of us youth from Canada stood up, they turned around, and on the back of their shirt it said, turn your back on Canada. But they were thrown out of the hall and out of the conference. And then, just a few days later, the Canadian Environment Minister returned home and announced that Canada will step out of the Kyoto Protocol. Only months before the Kyoto Protocol is going to end, Canada just, just steps out of the protocol. Because in that um, contract, they promised that they would reduce their emissions by 6%. But instead, they went up by 35%. And because of that, they should have paid a fine. They should have paid 14 billion US dollars. But to save that money, Canada decided to step out of the um, protocol, out of their promise. Does that mean that our future isn't even worth 14 billion US dollars? But the worst part of the situation was probably that all the co other countries accepted that one um, country wouldn't agree and, um, to their problem. And this year, we Chover and Youth, we have a very important anniversary. The anniversary 300 years of sustainability. And the word sustainability originally comes from the foresters. Because the foresters plant trees all their lives, although they themselves do not have an advantage from, the, from these trees, but they plant the trees for the generations after them. And the best definition of sustainability we children and youth ever heard came from the indigenous people from North America. One of them once told us that in their village, every time they make a decision, they first think if even the seventh generation after them would still support this decision, and only then they would agree um, to do something. And if we thought the same way and acted the same way all around the world, the world would probably look very differently. But instead, today, we have companies using um, sustainability in their speeches, in their, in their um, reports, just to sell even more products. But we children, youth, uh, th uh, we think that all income, which is not, um, not produced um, um, sustainably, should have a 100% tax. Or at least there should not be any tax on sustainable products um, for our future, on sustainable income. And in the last couple of years, we children and youth, we noticed that we cannot wait for the adults to solve these problems. We have to take our future in our own hands. And um, at consultations with children from over 100 countries, we ended up with a three-point plan how we would save our future if we were the heads of governments of the world. And the first point is planting trees. Our goal is to plant one trillion trees, a thousand billion trees because that's the number of trees we have space for globally without having problems with civilizations and agriculture. And if we manage to plant these trees, they will absorb one quarter of the global human-made CO2 emissions each year. And these, um, to plant these trees, each person in the world needs to plant 150 trees. So that's the first point, 150 trees per person. The second point of our three-point plan is that we have to reduce our zero, um, CO2 emissions. We have to go down to zero emissions until 2050. And the best part about this point is that we already have all the technology we need for zero emissions today. We don't need research, but we can do it. And the third point is that even until 2050, there's only a limited amount of CO2 we can still exhaust. And that's one and a half tons per person per year. And if someone wants to exhaust more, then they pay to the ones that exhaust less. And by doing that, we can um, fight the poverty crisis. So thank you for being interested in the point of view of, of us children. Let's go for a better future together. One mosquito cannot do anything against a rhino, but a thousand mosquitoes can make a rhino change its direction.